Hey guys, today I'll be showing you something a little bit different here. I um, thought I'd take a minute here and show you how I added a quarter inch output to my Hammond M3 organ. Because uh, I've been actually asked about this quite a bit on my Facebook page and Instagram page of how I go about wiring in a quarter inch output. And I think the big confusion is on this one is that uh, a lot of people don't understand the field coil speaker. So there's two different versions of the M3. There's the earlier ones, which, which is like what I've got, where you actually have a field coil winding on the speaker. So you don't have a magnet, like a fixed magnet, like you see later on. Uh, the fixed magnet speaker is like what you find in guitar amplifiers, all the common stuff. This is a little, a little different. And a little bit more complex for that reason, because you got more wiring. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to wire this thing up for a, a quarter inch output and uh, just give you a good overview of how this works. So what we have here is I built my circuitry uh, to make this all work and in a nutshell what we have is we have a load resistor that takes the place of the voice coil of the uh, of the speaker because the the amplifier lacks constant load so this is a load resistor so it just keeps a constant load on the amplifier and that comes out through a resistor, a dropping resistor, and it goes through a, a uh, uh, coupling capacitor and then out to a uh, variable trim pot, which you, is basically the volume control for this. So it's, it allows you to adjust the volume like a normal instrument, and it comes out to a quarter inch. So that's primarily what it is. It's a pretty simple circuit. But uh, now the wiring is where a lot of people get confused on this, and I took some time myself to figure out how this thing wires up. So looking at the speaker, you've got a terminal block down here. And so you've got a, a black wire. Let me zoom in here. you got a black wire, a yellow wire, and another black wire. Uh, the first black wire is actually one going to the voice coil, but you don't see anything connected. The yellow wire, you'd actually see a green wire connected, even before this mod. And that green wire actually ties in that yellow wire, and it goes up to the back of this coil, this field coil, and comes back out on that black wire and that black wire is actually when it goes to the voice coil but you want to use the the yellow wire there and I'm guessing that there's probably some kind of uh, inductor or something uh, related to that uh, field coil in there that interacts with the audio I'm guessing I don't know uh, like I said I don't know much about the speaker design um, but anyways the green wire that was there you can see I tied I brought it uh, disconnected it desoldered it brought it down and I uh, soldered in a new wire and shrink wrapped it and that wire runs over here to my switch, my toggle switch which allows me to select whether I want to use the original speaker or if I want to use the circuit board I've added here, my quarter inch out and it's just a selector switch so I can run it with the original or I can run it with my quarter inch and shut off this speaker so what you want to do is you want to tie in the, the, the green wire from the yellow wire but that black wire, you can see there's a, a gray wire connected there, which I added. And I left it connected because it's going to be our ground reference. So I came off that ground wire and brought it down and I made a ground reference on our uh, load resistor there. You can see it right there, which also ties into our uh, uh, variable volume pot as well as our uh, ground on our quarter inch jack. And so that's how that works. So that the black wire, I don't actually disconnect it. I just leave it connected to the terminal block and we just select which way the amplifier uh, signal goes. If it goes into the voice coil or if it goes into the load resistor. So that's how it works. Pretty simple. But I will show you on the schematic drawing of what this looks like for those interested as well as where I got the concept for this idea. And if we go to the service manual you can see here this is a uh, earphone uh, wiring up if you'd want to wire up a headphone and so this is actually just a stereo based schematic but we're not we don't have a stereo amplifier it's a mono so this is probably for a different uh, a different mono organ uh, since we don't have stereo we're only focused on one half of this and so what we have is we have the green wire which I just brought up and the black wire green wire ties into the toggle just like I uh, mentioned before and it would actually select whether we use the speaker or the load resistor here, the 10, uh, 10 ohm, 10 watt resistor. 
And of course in this one it goes to 100 ohm resistor and 22 ohm resistor and out to your TRS jack for stereo. And of course it has an identical circuit down here for the other amplifier. So if you had a stereo set up it actually you know, use the other half of the amplifier the same way, but you'd have to have an extra load just like that because you're two, having two amplifiers. In this case, we don't have two amplifiers, we only got one. So that's how that works. And then, uh, so if we go over here, this is our schematic that I drew up for this, this circuit we built. So you can see a very similar thing. You can see from here on, it's actually the same circuit. You got your voice coil and you got your uh, 10 ohm, 10 watt load resistor selectable by this toggle. And then, so when you actually break this and go into this uh, load, you go through a 3K ohm uh, resistor into a 10 microfarad at 50 volt bipolar electrolytic capacitor for coupling. And then you go through a 50K audio tape your uh, volume control out to a TS jack, quarter inch TS. And uh, so that's how that works. That's pretty much the schematic. Okay, so another question that comes up is what if you want to remove that speaker altogether? Like, let's say that you're going to chop one of these things down to carry on the road, and you just want to eliminate that speaker altogether and just use just a quarter inch output or a Leslie hookup or, you know, that situation. Well, I'm not going to say I know exactly what you need to do, but I'm going to show you based off the schematics what I would do. And then I would actually probably recommend talking to a, a Hammond technician. Uh, to see what, what kind of wattage resistor you would need to put in place of the speaker. Okay, so now on a uh, on a fixed magnet speaker it's easy, you just get rid of it. But on the field coil speaker, since it does have that field coil interaction, that's what makes it a little bit more tricky. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm, first I'm going to show you the, the schematic of uh, the organ here and compare it to what a later organ looks like so you can get, a, get an idea of how this works. Okay, so what we have here is we have the power supply for the organ. We well, can see here that we have the uh, secondary windings here off the main transformer. And so you have a 6 volt for the heaters of the tubes. You got a 380 volt here, both 380 with a center tap, and a 5 volt uh, for this tube. And so what we have here is we have the rectification tube which actually rectifies these 380 volts into a DC, a pulsating DC. It goes in here and it's filtered through this capacitor uh, to kind of clean it up, make it more of a, of a clean DC, unregulated voltage. And now what you see here is you don't see any regulation. This is all, this is what you call a, a voltage divider circuit. So it's all it does is just do voltage division and it does it through resistors. So you can see the uh, resistors are in series across here. And so actually if you look here uh, past this resistor here, you'll see this line goes up here and you got 310 volts. And that 310 volts actually goes through another resistor right here and makes 290 over here. So that's how it generates this division. And then over here we've got, uh, past that resistor, we've got another resistor that brings 205, uh, plus 37, plus 32. And then if we go down here, you actually got a negative 22 off this uh, uh, 39K resistor here. So this is interesting. So here you can see the, the speaker field windings, and it's 700 ohms. So in order to make this thing work without the speaker, you'd have to actually put a 700 ohm uh, resistor right here. But this is where I say talk to the organ technician, because this is a coil, and sometimes coils are used for helping to clean up signals. So it may actually not be that you need to put a resistor there, but some kind of inductor to help clean that up. And like I say, I'm not an organ technician, I'm an analog synthesizer technician, so I don't really want to tell you wrong and feed you the wrong information, but I do know how this part works. So that's how that works. Um, and so to eliminate that speaker, you'd actually have to put something right here. You cannot leave that open. You'd have to have something right here to, to uh, make a, a complete circuit. And it would have to be 700 ohms rating, but whether it be a resistor or actually some kind of inductor to help filter, that's the question I can't really answer there. So if we go to the other schematic, this is a, la a later model, which actually has the, uh, the other speaker, which you don't have to worry about because it doesn't have those field coil windings, but just to show you in schematic, just so you can kind of see the differences. 
So you can see even the transformer is different here. You have, uh, instead of having 380, you have 320. Same rectification circuitry. And basically the same design, except you see values change here. So you have 320 here. It goes to this resistor, comes up over here, you get 295 over here, which is then goes this resistor, you get 285. And then you got 205 here, 37, 32, so all that looks the same. But down here is where it's different. So you got, in place of where that uh, field coil is, you got a 180 ohm resistor here. And then you've got uh, right here the negative 22 right off this line here, instead of having to go through a resistor, 39K resistor. So that's the difference. But like I say, don't use 180 ohm because that's for this design, and this design is different because you got different voltages. So if you put 180 uh, ohm in there, it would actually affect everything. It, it could actually cause some, some issues with these negative 22 volts and some other things um, just because of that difference in voltage. So you'd actually want to use like a 700 ohm rating, either resistor or inductor. But once again, I'm not going to say I, I know how to do that, but you need to talk to Oregon Tech to see if it needs to be inductor or resistor. So anyways, that's kind of uh, the differences there. I just want to bring that up as well for those that have asked me about removing the speaker altogether. And now since you've heard me talk about the uh, actual circuitry, I'm just going to show you how this thing sounds. So I've got the Lester G hooked up in place of a Leslie simulation. So we'll actually turn it off so you can hear just the raw organ. The foot pedal works the same, everything works the same. This is through our quarter inch out. So it works like that. We'll turn on the, the Lester G. We'll play. Uh I'm using a stereo out of the Lester G. Um, yeah, the Lester G is made for a guitar. I chose the Lester G because I wanted to actually make sure I could use it with a guitar or the organ. And so I chose the Lester G. Uh, but what's nice about it, we can actually get a little distortion here and we'll go into that kind of rock organ kind of. <laughs> on this organ, which I, that's what I like about this organ, we can try on percussion, so without it, with it, and we got slower fast decay. So anyway, 
anyways, I just want to make a video going over the benefits of having a quarter inch output here. Let that big truck get by. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyways, just want to take a minute here and show you just a little play with the quarter inch output with the uh, Lester G here. And of course, with the quarter inch output, you can run this thing through phasers, you can run it through ring modulators, you can run it through anything you'd want to, and use it in other, other ways besides just an organ, contemporary organ sound. Uh, but yeah guys, anyways, just wanted to come in here and make a video for you guys. Uh, Merry Christmas, this is probably the last video of the year. Uh, so Merry Christmas to you guys, and I hope everybody has a wonderful new year ahead. And I will see you next year. Take care.